Productions has been running tours and research trips to the sunken British Ocean liner since 2021. The company has carried at least 46 people to the wreck with something approximately 300,000 for the experience. Since the Titan's disappearance, details have emerged from a 2018 engineering report alleging issues with the submersible's structure and its ability to withstand the pressure of ocean where the wreck rests at a depth of 3,800 meters. The Titan was carrying five passengers, Hamish Harding, a billionaire and explorer, Paul Henry, a French explorer, Shahzada Daoud and his son Suleiman, members of a prominent Pakistani family, and Ocean Gate CEO and Titan pilot Stockton Rush. These men were true explorers who shared a distinct spirit of adventure and a deep passion for exploring and protecting the world's oceans. OceanGate said in a statement, This is an extremely sad time for our dedicated employees who are exhausted and grieving deeply over this loss. There likely would have been no time to use backup systems that could return the Titan to the surface in an emergency. Even if it hadn't imploded, the oxygen supply on the missing submersible would have passed the estimated maximum 96-hour mark Thursday morning, that is June 22nd morning. Submersibles like the Titan are deployed from a mothership. While submersibles can travel to and from ports under their own power. Although submersibles can be tethered to a ship on the surface, the Titan traveled independently. The driving force behind OceanGate, CEO Stockton Rush, outlined his vision for bringing tourists to the Titanic's wreck site in a 2017 interview with CTV News, where he said travelers who come out will participate in the dives. Rush compared the dives to James Cameron's expeditions that filmed and documented large portions of the wreck site, and he highlighted the fact that very few will have been able to set eyes on the Titanic since it sank in 1912. I wanted to be an astronaut and to me this is like exploring a new planet, said Rush. I have been waiting my whole life to do that. Authorities are hunting for the reason the submersible carrying people to the wreck of the Titanic imploded deep in the North Atlantic. The questions emerged about how such expeditions are regulated and tributes have been pouring in for the five aboard who were killed. The investigation into what happened has already started and would continue in the area around Titanic where debris from the submersibles was found. The first hint of a timeline came Thursday, June 22nd evening when a senior US Navy official said that after the Titan was reported missing on Sunday, June 18th, the Navy went back and analyzed its acoustic data and found an anomaly that was consistent with an implosion or explosion in the general vicinity of where the vessel was operating when communications were lost. The Navy official who spoke of the anomaly heard Sunday said the Navy passed on the information to the Coast Guard, which continued its search because the data was not considered definitive. Tributes to those killed and praise for the searchers who tried to save them poured in from across the globe. Director James Cameron, who has made multiple dives to the wreckage of the Titanic, told the BBC that he knew an extreme catastrophic event had happened as soon as he heard the submersible has lost navigation and communications at the same time. For me, there was no doubt, Cameron said. There was no search. When they finally got an ROV down there that could make the depth, they found it within hours, probably within minutes. He said briefings about 96 hours of oxygen supply and banging noises were a prolonged and nightmarish charade that gave the crew members, families, false hope. At least 46 people successfully travelled on Ocean Gate's submersible to the Titanic wreck site in 2021 and 2022. This is according to letters the company filed with a US district court in Norfolk, Virginia that oversees matters involving the Titanic shipwreck. But questions about the submersible's safety were raised by both a former company employee and former passengers. 
and experts noted the world of deep sea exploration is not well regulated. David Plushridge, OceanGate's former director of marine operations, argued in 2018 that the method the company devised for ensuring the soundness of the hull, relying on acoustic monitoring that could detect cracks and pops as the hull strained under pressure, was inadequate and could subject passengers to potential extreme danger in an experimental submersible. OceanGate disagreed. Lostridge is not an engineer and was not hired or asked to perform engineering services on the Titan, it said. And it noted he was fired after refusing to accept assurances from the company's lead engineer that acoustic monitoring and testing protocol was in fact better suited to detect flaws than a method he was proposing. In deep sea exploration, laws and conventions can be sidestepped. The Titan was not registered as a U.S. vessel or with international agencies that regulate safety, nor was it classified by a maritime industry group that sets standards on matters such as hull construction. Rush, CEO of the company leading the expedition who died on Titan, has said he did not want to be bogged down by such standards. One of the company's first customers, meanwhile, likened a dive he made to the site two years ago to a suicide mission. Imagine a metal tube a few meters long with a sheet of metal for a floor. You can't stand, you can't kneel, everyone is sitting close to or on top of each other, said Arthur Leubel, a retired businessman and adventurer from Germany. You can't be claustrophobic. Experts say the construction of the Titan could have been a factor in its demise, which led to an explosion that looks very different than an explosion. Water adds pressure to things in the ocean. When an implosion happens inside a submersible, water comes crashing in.